everyone. Today is Thursday, April 27th, 2023. My name is Vonna Pfeiffer. I'm also known as the Twisted Stitcher, and I am coming back to share with you what I did in March and April as far as my cross stitching. This channel is about cross stitching and finishing and all the things that I do craft wise, which is primarily cross stitching only. So we'll get started right away here. Um, today is my 27th anniversary. I want to wish my husband Keith a very happy anniversary. I love you and I do still. So we'll get right going with our, my finished pieces today. And um, I, I have four that I finished over the couple of months. I did not do a floss tube in March because it was just, I was too busy. And, um, but I did do a stitch with me video and I had such a wonderful response from that. So thank you. Uh, I hope to do those at least once a month. Uh, I, that gives me an excuse to set and stitch and talk. <laughs> and I enjoy doing that. And I had such a wonderful response from so very many people. So I thank you very, very much for your kind and wonderful responses. All right, to the finishes. You all will remember that I had finished uh, this piece, stitching this piece in February. And um, it is by Pigeon Coop Designs. It is called Jolly Squirrel. This is the pattern uh, cover. Again, I put my, um, all what I'm working on, I whips in a book. This is just an artist loft sketchbook from Michaels. You can get them pretty cheap and I just tear and paste and write um, information about this. So I finished this on April the 13th the stitching wise and I fully finished it just the other day and um this is going to be Ellie's ornament for 2023 she loves squirrels I you can tell that I did change some things on the design uh I made the snowflakes white I didn't put colors in his tail the center of the diamonds there has like the red and the green in it I didn't do that and um, I finished it just like this. Okay, so about this, that's what these are. This is the bead wreath from um, Hobby Lobby. I got this package, um, I guess three comes in there. Yeah, three pieces, they're four inches in diameter. And um, I like my ornaments to be about the size of my palm. This is a little big, but not too big, too, you know, like too huge. But anyways, I got these at Hobby Lobby on their clearance. I saw them and I thought, mm, I bet you I can do something with that to make an ornament. Then I think that Priscilla must have done the same thing because I've seen finishes like this all over. So great minds, right? But I got this for like a quarter, the package. I got several packages of these because I thought, oh, that would be so nice. You wouldn't have to do cording or anything. I hot glued the back of the ornament and the front of the ornament to the to the ball wreath. And this it came with this hanger and everything. It was quick. I bet you I had this finished in like 15 minutes. No kidding. Um, I laced the, the front and the back material. I have to still do my tag. I hand make tags and I'll quickly go over how I, how I hand make my tags. I will put white or you, you can use colored fabric. I choose to use white cotton fabric. I will iron it on to um, interfacing and then I use a micron pen which is a permanent ink pen. I don't, oh yeah, here we go. A micron pen, okay. Micron pen, they come in all different colors. You can do all different colors and I write like to Ellie, love mom, and then the, and then the date and I'll put, I just cut that out. The interfacing helps stabilize the fabric so that you can write on it like a piece of paper. And then I cut that out and I just glue it. I just put um, Aline's tacky glue on the back, a light 
layer of it and I just tap it onto the back and that's what how I do my tags. It gives it a quaint, it's my handwriting that they'll be able to see after I'm gone. Um, and it's, a, it's just a quaint thing. I've done that to all my hundreds of ornaments that I have made in my lifetime. So this again is Pigeon Coop's design, Jolly Squirrel, finished and ready for Ellie's ornaments for 2023. Then um, if y'all have been following me or watched my other Floss 2 videos this year, um, you know that I have been doing the Charmed Santa series. I finished uh, these two right here. Um, earlier this year, I finished this guy um, this month. Mm, when did I finish him? Yeah, April the 5th. I finished him April the 5th. And Fifth, and then I fully finished him just the other day when I was finishing the Jolly Squirrel. This guy's the next guy. These are Mill Hill kits. Um, there's two series. There's a total of 12 of these Santa faces. Um, series, they're called Charmed Santa faces. Charmed Santa faces by Mill Hill. There's a series one and a series two. So here's my finish. I just... I really do like, I really love these guys. Get it really close so that you can see the beading. Um, I finished these very simply. I cut out, lay this guy down. I'm gonna quit explaining this, but <laughs> because I've explained it like several, several times. I have a free tutor tutorial. For those of you who do not know me, I give free tutorials and I have for a period of 18 years. I have, you think I have a lot of video tutorials? I have twice that many written tutorials on my tutorial blog, Learn to Finish with the Twisted Stitcher. Google that or just Google Vonna, V-O-N-N-A. That's my name. And if you Google me, you will see all the places that where I have given free tutorials. I have a personal blog, I have a tutorial blog, and everything that I do, I do freely because I believe very strongly, very strongly, that those who are blessed mightily give mightily. And so I give freely from my heart, from me to you, all everything that I know. So, um, how I make this is in the sweater ornaments. It's a video that's a perforated paper. You just go to my channel and um, either look underneath the um, finishing videos or just Google Vana perforated paper finishing. You'll find it. But it's on that, it's a, a sweater ornament. And I finished these exactly the same way, except instead of doing cording around, I paint it with acrylic paint to match the front. Um, I love finishing my perforated ornaments like this because as you can see, I can't, I mean, I'm trying to bend it and I can't. <laughs> they are strong and they never curl. They never tear up. They just make very beautiful, um, gives it some weight, three, three layers of um, mat board is what this is. I just lay it down, cut it out, and I cut it with scissors. Here's a tip that I don't share on the video, but if you feel like this is not smooth, you see, what I do is if I can bend it in to make it, you know, I'll use my, um, this is a paper folder or a points turner, and you can just press that in to make it smooth. Or the other thing is, is if you feel like your cutting isn't smooth on the three pieces, use an emery board, like a sandpaper to sand it down. Where there's a will, there's a way. And my grandmother who had a very large part in my raising was a, uh, a depression child. And if she could make something work, she did. And so I learned from her. So an emery board works wonders or a points turner or a bone folder, a, a paper folder. Um, all of those will work to help you smooth out the sides if you're not pleased with that. Because I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't, mine doesn't look as smooth as yours. Well, my cutting's not as good as yours or whatever. I'm not 
I, I, I just, that's what I do. I just try to smooth it that way if I have problems with my cutting. All right, so there you go. His name is St. Nicholas. No, St. Nick. And this was, like I said, a Mill Hill kit. Charmed Santa's faces. Then, I've also been stitching these thread milk designs. I've stitched Maine and New Hampshire. The next one is Vermont. And I told y'all before that I had, um, oh, let me tell you this. This is from Thread Milk and it's um, Statehood Splendor Series. So I have Maine done and I have New Hampshire done. And I had an idea. I had a client that I finished for and um, she had finished hers, had me finish hers into ornaments for her Christmas tree. I guess they were ornaments for a Christmas tree. Um, but anyways, they were ornaments. And so I thought, oh, that is a really great idea. And as I was finishing hers, I thought, oh, but an even better idea would be. And so I am going to share with you what I submitted as the finish for the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher summer issue. It's not out. It won't be out until summer. But um, I'm going to share with you, give you a preview of how I finished these. And if you want to know how to do it perfectly, exactly like how I've done mine, you need to subscribe to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. So I'm going to share, because I give a, um, a, a free tutorial, or I write a, tape, a tutorial with pictures in every issue, and I have for several years. But here's the pr uh, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Spring magazine in there this time uh uh i think i had a uh, a flat fold i think i need to look yeah it's a flat fold but here's my um here's my column that i have every time and i give a different um I give a different video or a different tutorial, written and pictorial tutorial, tutorial, every issue. Um, Deb is very generous and has a lot of pages for me for my, you know. So there you go. You can see how to do that. Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. You can get a print subscription or a online subscription. And I believe that the print subscription comes with an online subscription so you can get back issues. I don't know 100% about that, but I think that that is the case. So anyways, like I said, if you would like to see how I finish these that I'm getting ready to show you with my idea that I did for these, um, subscribe to the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine or buy one when you see it on the newsstands. But, so here's my Maine and here's my New Hampshire that I finished from the Statehood Splendor series from Thread Milk Designs, okay? So I'm adding um, the year that we visited these states. So last year we went to one of two of the states that we visited was Maine and New Hampshire. We also visited Vermont and Maryland. And so, uh, no, 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 no. Vermont and Massachusetts and New York. So um, I have those three more states to do. But anyways, as I was finishing my clients, Statehood Splendor series into ornaments, I was thinking, you know, what would be so great is to like at when we go on vacation, those states we visit, that I stitch the ornament as is and add the year that we visited. And then wouldn't it be awesome to like write a little synopsis and create a pocket in the back to put the memories of the state that you had. So that's what I did. I made this, I found this great fabric. This fabric is from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to do all of them the exact same. I bought a huge, like five yards, which is overkill, but I bought five yards of it to save. And then for each state, I write a synopsis with the dates, what we did, what we visited. And then I fold it up and I put it in the back in the little pocket that I sewed onto the back. And I have my memories, and every year when we get these out, 
to put on the Christmas tree, we can pull out the memories and, rem and you know, reminisce about our vacation there. I think that's a really great idea. Maybe some people are like, oh, that's stupid. But I think that's an excellent idea. I use Christmas ornaments as a scrapbook of my family's life, my and my family's life. And this just hits all the bells and dings all the whistles. No, it would be, it would be ding the bells and blows the whistles, toots the whistles. <laughs> but anyways, here they are. I thought they were stunning. You want to know how to do these? You want to know how to finish them? You need to go to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher and get a subscription. All right, so those four are all my fully finished objects that I had for March and April. Wasn't I kind of was so busy and we've had a lot going on in our lives that um, I didn't stitch very much really over the last couple of months. But I did get those done and I'm thankful for that. All right, so we'll move on to whips. Um, again, I am stitching, this is again from the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, Teresa Colgate's um, Santa Nose. This is also available um, in her, in, as a printed pattern now, because this is old, this is from 2018. But anyways, I'm going to stitch basically just the Santa, the sheep, and some of these hollies around here. And I'm gonna make it into a stand-up for my mantle. Let me get my piece here. I just did a couple of, let me find it in my book. I think I just did a couple of days on this to finish the sheep. Yeah, I finished, I stitched it for about three hours to finish up the sheep. So there we go. This is on 25 count uh, country vintage mocha and um, 25 count. So I'm using three strands of DMC over two threads on the 25 count. I want it big. I want it large and in charge because I'm going to make a stand up for my mantle. And so there you go. You can see my stitching there. So I'm done with the sheep and I'm on to Santa. The sheep took forever. Santa is about two and a half times bigger than the sheep. It's going to be a long time before I get this done. I thought, oh, it'll, I'll be able to knock this out in no time, and that has not been the case. But anyway, so I did get the sheep done. We'll work on that again sometime. I also talked to you, I think, in February about, or January, one of those months, about I had started uh, from the days of Christmas, from Christmas Day until the 12 days were over with, I had started an idea that I'd had for a long time. And it is the Prairie Schooler, using the Prairie Schooler Angels. And I had an idea that I created um something to put along. I want these all lined up and then underneath the angels, I wanted to write uh, Gloria in Excelsis Dale, which means glory to God in the highest. So I charted, created myself some kind of gothic looking words and I stitched this over one, one over one. This is on black, 32 count, I think. No, 28 count black even weave. I don't like linen on dark colors, so I usually do an even weave. But I didn't know if it was Lugana, and it's not Lugana. It's just an even weave. Gloria in Excelsis Dale, charted by me. I have it lined up, so I'm stitching all three angels. So this month, I worked for a couple of days. Well, in March, I worked for a couple of days, and I finished the boxes, and I finished the words. So, um, I've had people ask me, will I give the chart for my wording? Cause they want to copy me. And if you want to copy me, I am honored. And yes, I will have that available. I will have it linked at some point under my video. I have, I thought I saved this charting, but I didn't save the charting for the words. So I'm going to have to redo that. Please give me a couple of days after this posts 
um, to YouTube. I will have it linked on to go to my personal blog where I have other free charts that are available um, there. And you'll be able to get your chart to print and um, all of that. But please give me a couple of days. Please, please give me a couple of days. <laughs> okay. I will do my very best to get that charted and up as quickly as possible. But again, it will be on my personal blog. I don't have the places to put everything. Okay, the next thing that I worked on was my Dimensions Gold, what's the name of this? Snowman Friends Stocking by Dimensions Gold Collection. Katie and Austin want stockings for their house and I would am happy to comply with that. Let me see if I have this in my whip book. I should, yeah, I do. So I started this on April the 10th. I had to restart it for some reason. Oh yeah, I'll talk about that. So I restarted, I picked everything out and I restarted it. I started it on April the 10th. And the reason I, I restarted it was because um, Dimension Golds is intense. And I'm gonna show you a portion of the um, pattern because um, to show you how I did that I found it very much easier to stitch. I love Mary Rose of Stitch Bliss Corner. If y'all don't follow Mary Rose of Stitch Bliss Corner, please look her up on YouTube. She is a fantastic lady from <clears throat> Australia and she stitches full cover coverage pieces. And she shared a video about how she does her dimensions kits and, but on all of her stitching, she, she, uh, graphs, uh, is that what it's called? Graphing? What's it called? Gritting. It's called gritting. Well, I've started stitching on this and Dimensions kits are like intense. And, um, anyway, so I wanted to share with you that she did, does this to her, patterns and it's like helped me so much is that she so this is a working copy on all my dimension kits I well anything that I cross stitch I make working copies so this is a working copy and so I high use a highlighter to highlight so the red is the center and you know so the center line that goes horizontal is down here somewhere but she highlights every box, so you so all 10 boxes on it. How easy, how oh my, how much easier has that made it a ton easier? So I learned that from Mary Rose. The other thing I learned was well, I didn't learn it, but she shares how she grids and she says that you can stitch so much faster when you're stitching a full cover coverage piece if you grid. Now, I know people use the water soluble markers and I thought about that and then I thought mm, I don't typically wash my pieces and um which I probably might have to wash this piece since it's on white and it's snow and stuff like that but I thought I'm just gonna use thread that's what Mary Rose uses and grid now I don't I'm not gridded I haven't gridded exa exactly how Mary Rose grids but it's a grid. I used red thread to do my center like I did on, so I can quickly find my center. When I get to the box, I kind of cut it, but I leave the threads flopping so that I can like hang, so I, that I can like put them back together to kind of count and stuff. This is only a couple of days of stitching and I know that doesn't look much like much, but it's a huge amount of stitching really because, um, I only stitch in the evenings a couple of hours and that is really a lot. So this is like his face and his middle belly part. So anyways, I've got a long way to go, but I did want to say that gritting really does make a huge difference in the, in how fast you stitch, especially on dimension kits because you're using different um, amounts of floss and there's a lot of different colors and, it just really 
it really helped. It helped me. I really liked it. So anyways, I thought I'd share, but I gritted. Gritting, now I will say the gritting took a long time. I can understand why you would want to do um, just the marker. That would be so much faster. And maybe I might try that on the next one. But now I use just regular thread. Some people say not to use that. Some people use this, uh, this easy count guideline thread. It, it appears to be like um, a fishing line. It's, very, it's like a nylon, sort of like a fishing line. You can see that. So anyways, um, I did not use this because I ordered it after. I want. I had this wild idea and then I couldn't get it quick and so I thought I wanted to start it so I just used thread. But um, anyway, so gritting, that's what I know about gritting, which isn't much, but there I said it. There I said it. <laughs> anyways, the next thing that I worked on, which y'all probably have seen if you follow me on Instagram is, is that I've worked on the face of Jesus. I started this on Ash Wednesday. I had hopes that I would get it done on um, Good Friday. Mm -mm, didn't happen. Should have known that. Um, but I have been faithfully stitching and I hope to have this one done. This is the second time I've stitched the Jesus face from Bravaco. See, it's from Bravaco. That's the company. This is a European company. You can find this pattern at any cross stitch shop usually or, um, you know, just put Vervaco Jesus Face. Hirsch, I've seen it at Hirschner's. I've seen it at the Stitchery. I've seen it on Amazon. I've seen it on 123 Stitch. Um, I've seen it a lot of places. I was told today or sometime recently that people can't find it. It's sold out. So, but, um, Anyways, you can find it lots of places. I've stitched it once before, gave it to my son-in-law, Austin. Y'all know that story. If not, look at a video on March's video and you can hear that story. But here it is where I'm at as of last evening. So I just have, you know, the, let's see, what is that? The left side of his head to do it down, goes down there so I'll get it close there for you I'm using the kit floss and the kit fabric I have not ran out of floss yet um, I do have a conversion on this and I will also I've shared it before I will share it on this video I will be stitching this again at least another four times four or five times maybe I don't know I just feel like what's the best thing that you can give somebody Jesus so um, this one might be going to my priest and I would so I, I eventually want to stitch one for me and I would like to give one to my other three children Katie already has one. So, anyways, there he is. I just think he's beautiful. And when it's framed the way I framed my last one, I want to frame it exactly the same way I framed it in a gold frame. It was just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so there was my Jesus face. Again, it's on 14 count. Uh, Ada, I'm going to start saying Ada because I get questioned why I call call it Aida. I had a friend whose name was Ada, A -I, spelled A-I-D-A, and she wanted her to say Aida and or Ida. And so I'm just going to say Ada because then everybody knows what I'm talking about. So there you go. 14 count Ada, two over one using all kit flosses. All right, so then I pulled out this next one. And let me get my book. Where's my book? Oh, come on. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Where did my book go? Okay, so I started 
to, I pulled out a very old whip, okay? So I started this in 2015, which doesn't seem that it's been that long, but it has been. So the last time I worked on this was on 2019. And I don't know why I have stumbled so much with this one because it's really a great idea, but um, it's the Prairie Schooler year rounds. Now I don't ever, Prairie, a lot of my charts that are hard to get, like the dimensions kits that I've like fought and, and have not fought, but I've like really searched for some of them um, to get on eBay or secondhand stores or whatever. Um, I will like treat them almost like gold. I keep like the everything inside the package or I will Xerox the cover sheet and everything. And Prairie Schooler for me, the hard folded cardboard type Prairie Schooler shiny cardstock are, is like that. I have the whole collection of Prairie Schoolers. I've um, collected them since I was in high school. And um, anyway, so I just take Xerox copies and, and that's what this is. So it's a Xerox copy of the Prairie Schooler year rounds. Okay. I started this in 2015 and I haven't stitched on it again since 2019, but I pulled it out in March and I finished, funny enough, the last time I finished this was in March, or the last time I stitched in it was on in March of 2019, and then I picked it up again. March must be the day that I pick it up. Um, stitched on it and finished in March 2023. So I have all of the four, or all of the 12 year rounds. I have a box to find here, and I'm stitching, centering them and stitching them each of the pieces in the box. Now then, what I was going to do was this was going to be like my quilting look and I was just going to bind, you know, like put some fabric around the edges, bind it, make a wall hanging. But I think that I'm going to actually cut these out and make a quilt because I finished this for something similar for a client last summer and I'll insert a picture right here. Fantastic, right? That was beautiful. Anyways, you can't get a really good picture of it because it was, you know, it's rather large. And I think she must have gotten the idea to stitch them in the same style that I'm stitching mine. I don't know that, but I know that she does watch my videos. So anyways, um, here they are. I stitched this one, which is, so this is January, February, March, April, May. So I'll, next one to do is June. And I, I mean, this is easy. This is also a 25 count, even weave black. I'm stitching three over two because I wanted it larger, wanted them larger. And I just think to make a wall hanging quilt, a quilted wall hanging that looks, you know, would be cute. So I don't know. I haven't totally figured out what I'm going to do yet, but I do think I do like these. I'm stitching it all as in the same colors as charted on black even weave. So there you go. Got that. And those, my friends, are all my whips. So let's talk about plans, which I typically don't do plans because plans for me are broken if I say what I'm going to do. But um, I was thinking about what I want to do. I would like in the next uh, three or four days, how many days is that? 27, 28, 29, 30. So like four days, I would like to try to finish my face of Jesus. I think I can do it. I'm basically taking the rest of this week off. We've had a very stressful spring time. I have done a lot for my church the last couple of um weeks i've had several i've had four funeral lunches and and um i had a priest luncheon that i helped with and 
I helped cook for. I was supposed to help be there, but I didn't actually go because I had conflict. But um, I did help with food. And um, I've just had, we've, we're building a deck on the back of our house and we're making it covered. And the first contractor that we hired took our money, did a little bit of work and then left. And we can't find, you know, we, he's left, I don't know where he's at, left the country. <laughs> We don't know where it's at, but we found uh, another, a, a young man from our church that's in the construction business that has taken it on as a side job. Um, so we're, we're having that built, being built, but it, he had to tear down what the guy before did because it wasn't to code. Long story short, we're, it's going to be a little bit of a drug out time, but we're going to, it's, he's really doing a good job and that's great because it's going to be fantastic. I can sit out there and finish or stitch or sleep if I want to. It's going to be awesome to have a very nice covered deck. So that's gone on. There's just been a lot of upset. Our, our cat Chatty passed away. At the end, I'll put some pictures of Chatty. He was 18 years old and he did not suffer. I'd just given him his treats and he just about a half an hour later, we probably had a stroke or a heart attack or something and just passed away. So, but it was upsetting because he was not sick at all. Even though he was 18 years old, he wasn't sick at all. But anyways, long story short, I was thinking about what to do in May. And I think that I'm going to have a monogamous May, a, mono a monogamous May with Santa Claus. I haven't stitched on this since January. And this is Marilyn Levitt Emblem Lavender and Lace, Santa of the Forest. This is what it looks like. When it's fi finished, it's huge. I would love to have this finished by Christmas. So I have decided that I'm going to have a monogamous May and I'm going to stitch only on my told in a garden Santa. I love Santa. If you follow me at any length, you know that I really love Christmas. And one of the things that I really love is Santa Claus. And I have so many Santa Clauses lined up that I want to stitch that I need to get this Santa Claus done because all the Santa Clauses that I want to stitch is huge. Like Nap Time Santa from Dimensions Gold. Do I have that picture? Yeah. This is a picture of my chart. Nap time Santa. Santa's nap. It's huge. Like, how big does it say? It doesn't say. But it's huge. It's absolutely huge. But isn't that cute as can be? I'd love to stitch that one sometime. There's other ones, but the next one that I know that I want to start is this one, which is Santa's List. And I shared this one last time. I have it all picked out, what I want to stitch it on. So, but before I do any more Santas that are that huge, I need to get this huge Santa done. And, I mean, he is absolutely gorgeous. Marilyn Levitt Emblem was a artist. I don't care what anybody says. This, I mean, look at the details. Look at that face. It's just absolutely stunning. The, the owl is stunning. Everything is stunning, but it's hairy. His beard's hairy. And I kind of have uh, faltered on him again. I've faltered several times on him. This, I've actually, this is the second start I've done on him. I had him stitched up to the bottom of his beard. So I had the wolf, most of this coat down here, and his staff. I had all that stitched, and I, and I, didn't think it looked good and so I restarted and I started at the top this time so anyways Santa of the Forest it's going to be a monogamous May stitch for me <clears throat> so we'll see how far we get I'm not going to do any posts on Instagram about my stitching I'll still share my finishing but I'm not going to give any updates on Instagram so it'll all be a surprise for y'all when you come back at the end of May but it will just be a monogamous Santa of the Forest, May. Okay, now then. Uh, cat hair on my Santa. I love looking on Instagram at people's work. And there's so many beautiful stitchers, 
so many beautiful stitchers. And this channel is about cross stitching. And you know, we all can't see everything, right? Many times people will send me stuff or uh, pictures of their work. If I've inspired, said something on my videos or I've inspired them to, they wanna share with me. And so I got permission from most of these people. There's some that I have not gotten permission from, but I hope that they won't, I won't I'm not gonna share their last name so you can go find them. But um, I do want to share some video, some pictures of some pieces that are absolutely gorgeous that have inspired me to like go look at the pattern or think about, <laughs> think about the pattern or think about other patterns from the same designer. So this first one is from Scarlett and she sent me a picture of her husband Dwight's finish of Grandpa's House by P. Buckley Moss that I shared. June Griggs design um, had, I, I have a love for P. Buckley Moss and June Griggs in the 80s and the 90s charted P. Buckley Moss paintings for cross stitch and I shared that collection that I had of them last video and Scarlett sent me a picture of what her husband Dwight had stitched and they had it framed and then they took the piece to a showing where um, the artist P. Buckley Moss was at and they had her sign the glass like she signs on her limited edition prints. So let me insert a picture of Dwight's finish right here. Isn't that fantastic? It makes me, when I saw that picture, it made me want to get my grandpa's house because I do have that pattern and start stitching ASAP. Fantastic. Then last time I also shared my Santa's list, this one, and said that I wanted to start that. And I had a couple of people send me, I had a lot of people send me uh, pictures of their Santa's list. I want to send, I want to share with you Marnie's. Um, Marnie shared her Santa's list. And what she did was she changed the names in the stitching on the, on the list. She stitched names of her family in the middle po portion of it. Here is her framed Santa's list right here. Makes me want to start that right now. But not only did she send me a picture of her Santa's list, so did Kathy. Kathy's a friend of mine on Facebook and Instagram. And here is her picture of her Santa's finished. I had shared with you all that I wanted to stitch mine on 25 count over two. She stitched hers on 25 count over two. And here's her picture right here. Don't y'all want to start stitching Santa's list? Yes, that's why I've got to get the Santa of the forest done. <laughs> then I had a friend, Angela, who sent me a picture of her Lost No More. I love Lost No More, and I had wanted that kit for a long time, especially after watching... Um, Handwork Maniac, Brenda at Handwork Maniac, stitch hers. Absolutely fantastic. It's a Greg Olson print, and it was created into a kit in Dimensions Gold several years ago. I didn't pick it up when it was plentiful in the store because I was too good for Dimensions kits at that point in my life. Ha ha. And since then, I've found my humility and have decided that Dimensions kits are where it's at. And I found a very reasonably priced Dimensions Gold kit of Lost No More. And Marnie shared with me a picture of her Lost No More. Let me put that in right now.
fantastic, stunning, wasn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Now then, these people did not share with me. They were just people that I saw on Instagram when I scroll through to look at people's works. I love doing that. And um, so Samantha at Rain Valley Stitches stitched Jeweled, San Jeweled Elephant by Shannon Christine. Look at these pictures right here. Can you imagine, what do you say about that? Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the the jewels on it. The, the, the beading is fantastic, I think, personally. Then, the Academic Stitcher. I love following her on Instagram. Um, it, her handle is The Academic Stitcher. She has, has been stitching Mill Hill's uh, nativity ornaments. I don't have those. But look at this, Blackbird Designs, Christmas Garden. I've always liked this piece, but the way the Academic Stitcher stitched it, honestly, gorgeous. She's changed the reds to a brighter red, and the greens seem to be a brighter green. And here's a picture of it. Fantastic. And lastly, I have a friend, Kathy, from Canada, and she, I watched her on Facebook stitch the uh, Marilyn Lovett Emblems Angel of Love. I have that piece. I, ha I have that, well, I, I have the pattern, and I have it kitted. I have not had the gumption to stitch it yet, but anyway, sh I watched her stitch it all along. I mean, she stitched it what I think fast. It beating took a long time for her. And I know because she kept on saying on her Facebook updates, you know, still stitching, still beating. But um, anyways, here was frame that she shared in the Lavender and Lace group on Facebook. Absolutely stunning. Here's a picture of it. All right, so those are just a few of my shares. I just think that there's people that do such fantastic work and we all can't see it. And I want to celebrate those people that have just created what I think to my eye are fantastic finishes, fantastic pieces. And so I thank each and every one of you that I shared here. And I hope that you don't mind if I haven't contacted you about sharing. Um, but I just love, love your work. And I, I just love it. I just think it's awesome. Okay. So I love to share tips here on what I find useful for my stitching. And this month's tip is about needle threaders. So this is my favorite kind of needle threader. threader. Low ran. Isn't it Loran? Yeah. Loran needle threader, easily available at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, wherever. Um, at, I'm, at cross stitch shops have them. You can find them anywhere. But this is not, uh, it must be like aluminum because it's not magnetic at all. And so I would always constantly losing these. There's probably like a hundred down in the cushions of my recliner that I'll never find again. So I, as I've aged and my eyes have gotten not as good as what they were, or as I've started stitching more and more uh, dimensions kits or uh, charts in a way that uses more than one thread, it sometimes gets hard to, to thread a needle. And so what I use these and to not lose them, I use scissor fobs that have a lobster claw on it. And so then that way, my needle threader is right 
on the lobster claw and I can easily find it if I drop it down the cushions, I can easily grab it. And, or it makes a, you know, <laughs> when it drops and I know, uh oh, I dropped my needle threader. So I just thought I would share that, you know, where there's a will, there's a way and use a scissor fob with a lobster claw for your fob for your needle threader. All right, so there you go. That's it. That's all I have for you. And I'm, and it's only, well, it'll probably after my pictures because I want to, and since I'm celebrating my 27th anniversary, I want to put in some pictures of Keith and I and our family. And I'll put some pictures of Chatty here in at the end. And I thank you so very much for joining me today. You bring such joy to my life. I hope that I bring a little sunshine to yours. Until the next time, keep a smile on your face and one on your heart and you just can't go wrong. Bye-bye. Thank you.